All right, thanks again. Uh, we'll keep going to our feature presentation for primary keys and validation results by Will. So Will, take it away. So this one, so, cause uh, there's a demo link to it. So I think it'll make the transition a little bit easier. So if you allow me to hijack, here we go. I think uh, everybody can see my screen okay? Yep, you are good to Great. go. Great. So the title of my uh, demo here is Primary Keys and Validation Results. And I wanted to start us off with a little bit of a history lesson on where this feature came from. Uh, the feature came from originally a issue submitted by the community um, some time ago, and it had to do with a limitation of expectation validation results. So if you've used GE for any um, length of time, you know that these EVRs or expectation validation results show you a partial unexpected list, which is where or, or what the unexpected values are, and unexpected value count, which is how many there are. And so one piece that was missing was where are these unexpected values? And so uh, this sort of limitation made identifying kind of where the bad data was, uh, diverting it, maybe splitting your data up into the good and bad portions a little bit more difficult. And um, it was a discussion caused, uh, kind of started off by Ken Parton here. A lot of other community members were able to con contribute to this discussion. Uh, one user, Aiden Fennessy, uh, got the ball rolling in terms of the Pandas implementation. And it was a great example of something that really was motivated by the community. Kind of the, the baton was passed on to the core team and GE, you know, as a company, we were able to sort of uh, take this over the line. And so thank you all who like joined in that discussion. Like none of this functionality that I'm about to sort of demo today, it would have been possible without uh, every one of you. And so, um, on one asterisk is pandas had this um, unexpected index list uh, that was uh, a list of indices according to the default pandas index, but it was kind of a limited um, output and it certainly didn't work for SQL or Spark. And so this uh, feature kind of expands that functionality to the other backends and execution engines. So to sort of illustrate where or how this works, I wanted to um, kind of use an example. So this is a, a SQLite table called event names. And in our example, this table uh, is storing page view data. And so uh, we have event ID, visit ID, date, event type as the columns. And anything related to page view, so page load and page view are expected. And things like user sign up, purchase, or download are not. And so if you have this table coming in on a regular basis and you wanted to detect when non page view data was getting uh, included in the table, you might uh, set up an expectation like this. So here is an expectation configuration where expect column values to be in set is our type. Our quarks include our column, which is event type, and we give it a value set. So page load and page view. So it'll um, kind of use these values as the expected values. And if you uh, add it to a checkpoint and you run the checkpoint, then you would get as we described before, this unexpected list, so user sign up, purchase, and download, which is our unexpected values, as well as their counts. But markedly, uh, no way to sort of identify where these values were. And so this is where this primary key functionality comes in. Um, this uh, kind of new way of interacting with the data allows primary keys to be specified using the unexpected index column names parameter. And it's, def it's defined at the result format level for checkpoints. And so it looks something like this. So this is a result format dictionary. Um, if you're familiar with <clears throat> if you're familiar with this functionality, you'll know that it can be like a um, just a key value, or it can be layered. So it can be you know result format, new dictionary, result format complete, and it allows you to specify more than one um, thing. And this is where this parameter goes in. And so in this example, unexpected index column names is passed into the result format dictionary, and we've identified event ID as our primary key column. And then what we can do with that dictionary is we can either run it as, or we can pass it in as a parameter to the run checkpoint. So this is the same uh, checkpoint as before, but now we're giving it this run format dictionary. Or 
uh, we can actually add this to the um, the runtime configuration of the checkpoint configuration itself. So that YAML uh, can also take in this parameter. And once you do that, then that same uh, EVR or the expectation validation result will include a unexpected index list. So this is the same parameter that like pandas used to have, but now we've sort of expanded this to the other backends. And this comes out as a list of dictionaries of the unexpected value itself, as well as the primary key that we defined. And so here is an example. So remember if these were the, um, the unexpected values, right? The non-page load and page view rows are the ones that we want. And the result now includes event type, which is our column here, user sign up, event ID three, which tells you where it is, event type purchase, event ID four, event type download, event ID five. And so if you have multiple values that are identical, then this will include all those locations. So kind of taking this list of dictionaries will help you pinpoint exactly where those kind of bad uh, rows are. The output also includes something called the unexpected index query. And this, the intent of this parameter or this result is to allow users to retrieve all the unexpected results from a table or a data frame. And um, so this is the, oh, it also comes with a, a parameter where you can suppress it. So return unexpected index query. Um, if you set it to false, as we see here, um, you can suppress this output and the default is true. So you'll get this uh, unexpected index query uh, by default. And this is a little bit different for each backend. Uh, so SQL output for that, uh, for our example, will be the query. So selecting event type and event ID from event names, which is the table. And here's our condition where event type is not null and the values are not in page load and page view. This is internally the query that is run um, against the, the database backend. But running this query, like copying this into your database interface um, and running it will allow you to retrieve your original, uh, the unexpected rows from your original table. Uh, for Spark, it's a very similar thing, but it's a condition on the data frame. And then for Pandas, it's a list of all unexpected indices and um, unexpected indices. Uh, and one kind of thing that um, I'll be showing in my demo a little bit too, was that unexpected index query can include multiple indices. So here's an example where both event ID and visit ID are specified. And then it can also include for pandas, uh, the named index column. So it's the one where you like, you get one by default and there's a way you can kind of name a column as an index. And um, this functionality will allow you to interact with these uh, named indices as well. So what do they look like rendered? Um, here is a kind of a screenshot of a data doc. I'll, we'll, we'll be interacting with one later. But where this information has been added is the existing unexpected count table. And so here, um, everything up until this column was something that already existed. But on top of that now is our event ID primary key column along with the values. And um, just as a, as a side point, if you have situations where you have like a lot of unexpected values, um, it'll display by default up to 10 values and it'll do dot, dot, dot. So you're not overwhelmed with like hundreds of these unexpected indices uh, in your data docs. And then if you look down here, there is a to retrieve all unexpected values and it's a drop down menu. So if you click it, then the query that we talked about before, uh, that'll come up and you'll be able to kind of copy and paste this to uh, wherever you're interacting with your table. So now is a demo. Um, kind of illustrating what we uh, just talked about. Um, and so here is just kind of a setup. So here is a batch request um, for retrieving the events names table. This is a SQL example. And um, if it's useful, um, I think this is a, a set of examples like for Pandas, Spark, and SQL, where it can be uploaded uh, so that users can kind of play around with this working example of IDPK. But um, just for the sake of demonstration, uh, please know that like there is a, a great expectations YAML file connected to a uh, SQLite database, um, identical to the one we were talking about in the presentation. And here is the checkpoint configuration. Oh, so let's first load GE. We will be getting our context. 
and then batch request. And now we've added our checkpoint to the configuration. So it's really simple. We just have the batch request as the validation. We're storing them. We're storing the valuation parameters. And critically, we're updating our data docs. And so for our first example, uh, unexpected index names are not configured. And here is something that's uh, probably familiar with everybody. But we've taken our EVRs and we're showing just the result. And we don't really see, um, so we have the partial unexpected list and the counts. But now, in our second example, we've defined unexpected index column names. And so that same checkpoint output will include our unexpected index list. So here we have purchase uh, uh, as the event type value, event ID equals four, event type download, event ID five. And we also have our unexpected query, which is uh, what we showed before. And then just as a final example, wanted to show the specifying multiple index column names. And it's basically the same output, but you'll see that the dictionary contains one more key value entry. And uh, the index query selects one more column. And so that way you're able to get the the rows that are wrong and just the columns that you are interested in. So now let's, oh, as a final sort of demo, I'll, I'll show uh, how these show up in our data docs. Um, this was the original one without any unexpected um, index column name specified. Here is our uh, example with one column specified with our query. And then here, is what it looks like with two columns. So event ID, visitor ID, and then the, the query is updated to include um, all the three columns that we are now interested in. So that concludes the demo. I uh, just wanted to think again, I mean, everybody who helped with the discussions here, uh, this really was a kind of a collaboration between the core team and the community. And so really getting this far and having this hopefully very useful functionality is would not have been possible without the community. So thank you all who contributed and thank you all who will be uh, using this uh, in the days to come. Thanks, Will. That was awesome. And you got through the live presentation. Congratulations. I did without exploding. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Uh, does anyone have any questions right now that Will could answer, or or stuff that that Don was presenting on earlier? If not, always, uh, you know, I'm sure you know, this, this is a new thing that that Will's presenting. Feel free to play around with it and ask questions uh, in in the Slack community. Um, we'll we'll be there. Uh, all right, cool. Well. Um, Thanks, any, everyone, again, for coming. Uh, we'll see you next month. If you're interested in ever doing a presentation on your use case uh, or, or things about data quality, let me know. Uh, we'll make some room for you. All right. See you all next month. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you very much.